Secretary of State Linda McCullough has actually requested the federal government come audit the state's use of funds. It's called the super shot and it takes folks high, high above the fair. We're told 75 feet to be exact. Some of the oldest formations in this cave have taken two to three million years to form. Oregon and Washington both allow physician-assisted death for terminally ill patients, but those laws came from the voters. In Montana, the issue started with just one man, but will end at the state Supreme Court. You don't know him long enough, I guess. I, I, I have to believe that. Nearly nine months after his death, Robert Baxter's fight for the right to die lives on. He, he knew that this suit wouldn't be resolved in time for him to use it, but he said that he was hoping that somebody else could benefit from it. His family was present Wednesday as the case went before the Montana Supreme Court. The 76-year-old retired truck driver lost his battle with leukemia the day a district court judge ruled in his favor last December. Shortly after, the state appealed that lower court decision. There are so many important perspectives and policy questions surrounding the medical, the philosophical, the moral implications of this. The state is asking the Montana Supreme Court to let voters decide the issue through either the state's legislature or initiative process. The plaintiffs argue the rights to dignity and privacy are enough to uphold the district court decision. There's a fundamental difference between suicide, as we all think of, which means something we want to avoid, and someone hastening their death to avoid unnecessary suffering. Because Baxter's case involves the state constitution, the United States Supreme Court cannot appeal the state Supreme Court's final decision. The court concluded the hearing this morning simply by stating both arguments will be considered. It could be weeks or even months before justices reach a decision. Live at the state capitol, Kay Rossi, Montana's news station. A train derails near Helena. I'm Kay Rossi and I'll have that story coming up. You know, the owner was telling me earlier that they have not had any problems since it started on Friday. Today we're talking about ballot initiative I-155. Few less steaks, few more can of beans, and we can save the taxpayers uh, 25000 bucks. House Minority Leader Scott Sales introduced multiple amendments to the state budget Monday, including two that would cut down the governor's expenses. If the governor spent too much money in the previous biennium, then maybe you should take it out of this one. The proposed amendments would get rid of the state's official airplane used to transport Governor Brian Schweitzer and would trim down the food and hospitality budget at the governor's official residence. Sales says the cuts would send a message to Montanans who have been forced to cut back themselves. These people have needs, and their budgets aren't going up. In the end, both amendments failed. Assistant Minority Floor Leader Tom McGilvery proposed a more drastic cut, the entire Healthy Montana Kids Plan passed by voters in the fall, saying there simply is not enough money. It was like we were saying that, hey, we've got uh, millions of dollars here sitting in a rat hole that these legislators up here couldn't figure out what to do with it, so it's never been spent. Well, we all know that's not the case. We spend every penny we can get our hands up here. That amendment also failed. Budget bill sponsor John Sesso told the body House Appropriations thought long and hard before passing the bill through committee. It is a product that we are presenting to you on purpose. Uh, this is not just a default budget. It's not a, a matter of just giving you something that we can get through the day and move on. And Sesso says he believes his fellow committee members are pleased with the end result. Kay Rossi for Montana's news station. We'll continue to bring you coverage from both the Democratic and the Republican state headquarters. In Cupertino, I'm Kiriaki Rossi, NBC 11 News. The Department of Defense is working to make sure all vehicles with a gunner station like this one are proper equipped a 1% decrease of travelers may not look like much. The teen was arrested around 8.30 this morning in Helena's Rodney Street area and had his initial court appearance just hours later. Life imprisonment. Sebastian Oliveris Coster sat silently as he heard the charges brought against him Thursday morning. Since you're charged with three things, the sentences could all run one after the other. So In addition to deliberate homicide, he is also charged with two counts of attempted deliberate homicide. He faces three separate sentences of either life imprisonment or 10 to 100 years in prison if found guilty. Bail is set at $500,000. What we have here that, you know, the affidavit sets forth uh, one of the most brutal homicides uh, scenarios that is, is imaginable. We have one uh, dead person and we have another one who's headshot at St. Peter's Hospital.
We have a third who is uh, shot multiple, multiple times. According to court documents, a concerned citizen walking in southwest Helena heard about five gunshots and saw one male shoot three other males. 16-year-old Corey Andrewski was killed and two unidentified persons were wounded. If that is to be believed, then what we have here is somebody who uh, in a cold-blooded fashion went out and tried to kill, did kill one person, tried to kill two others, and we have a very seriously injured person at the hospital. While the police department cannot offer details as to Oliveris Coster's background or possible motives, the 17-year-old's public defense team had this to say. He has been basically a lifelong Helena resident. His parents are living here, his sister's living here, so he does have strong ties to the community. Oliveris Coster will be detained at a juvenile detention center in Great Falls until further notice. Meanwhile, the investigation in Helena continues. We're still trying to piece some of this together, talk to some other witnesses, still up at the scene collecting some evidence, and we are still executing some search warrants. One victim was flown to Seattle Hospital. The other remains hospitalized here in Helena. Both are in critical condition, and a transfer court date has been set for Oliveris Coster for June 18th. That court date will decide whether the case moves to juvenile court or if it will stay in district court. Live in Helena, Kay Rossi, Montana's News Station.